Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today we're traveling into a three millennia long history to explore a language of one of the most ancient empires, a language which is still internationally significant today. Salam and welcome to the Persian language. So Persian is not really a small language and on this channel I'm trying to make videos on languages that don't really get that much attention. And by the way, if you love languages, definitely subscribe, you won't regret it. Persian was voted by you, my subscribers, and actually it is interesting to explore it, because it seems to me that even though it's big, it is still rather mysterious for most of the people. Plus, I can understand your interest in Persian. Chon zabaniast, keman ham daram yad migeran. Persian is spoken as a first language by about 70 million people, mostly in Iran, where it is called Farsi, in Afghanistan, where it is called Dari, and Tajikistan, where it is called Tajiki. Even though the names differ, these are virtually three varieties of the same language. Adding up for people who speak Persian as a second language, for example the numerous minorities in Iran, we obtain around 110 million speakers. That would put Persian somewhere in the top 20 of the most spoken languages in the world. But despite that, most of the people unfamiliar with Persian would say, oh, Persian, isn't that similar to Arabic? Never, never call Persian Arabic. Let's see why in history. I understand why people could think that Persian and Arabic are relatives, they use the same script, they are spoken in the neighboring regions, but Persian is an Indo-European language, so actually it is closer to English than to Arabic. It all began approximately 5000 years ago around southern Russia and Ukraine, when Indo-Iranians split from the Indo-Europeans. They migrated east and then south and these were the guys who called themselves Arya or Aryans and to this day the name of Iran goes back to Aryan or the land of Aryans. Iranian languages come in all shapes and colors but we are particularly interested today in this southwestern Iranian tribe Parsa. They've been in the region since around 10th century BC and it might have stayed that way if it wasn't for a young and ambitious king named Kurosh, who in the 6th century BC took a country that looked like this and made it this. In English this king is known as Cyrus the Great, you may have heard of him. This is the beginning of many Persian empires that rose, fell, rose again, and so did Persian language, evolving in synchrony with the empires. Achaemenid Empire corresponds to the old Persian stage, when the language was inscribed in cuneiform. Then it was gradually replaced by Middle Persian, rising with the Sasanian Empire. It was inscribed with the so-called Pahlavi script, which is derived from Aramaic script. With the Islamic conquest came the new stage, New Persian, and this period continues today. And just to be clear, these stages are purely conventional, in reality the language was gradually changing throughout the whole time. Just before the Arab conquest there were already several languages in use in the Sasanian Empire, most notably Middle Persian, the language of culture and religion, and Dari, which means the language of the court, and which was spoken by the court and by the common people living in the capital region. Curiously, when Arabs came, Dari was not wiped out of daily use, as it happened with other languages in the caliphate, like Aramaic or Egyptian. Quite the opposite, Arab immigrants switched to speaking Dari, and Muslim armies marching east were speaking Dari too, as they mostly consisted of converted Persians. They were called Tajiks, by the way, which comes from the Persian word for Arabs and can be also translated as Muslims. So Dari became a unifying force for the new religion, which resulted in adoption of this language by local populations. That is the time when many local languages, like Bactrian or Sogdian, disappeared. Now we need to really concentrate on those eastern provinces, as it is here when the new literally Persian crystallized. Because in the central and western areas the language of court and culture became Arabic, but the eastern parts were remote and local nobilities did not have such a good knowledge of Arabic there, plus they even broke out from the caliphate in the 9th century. Gradually, local rulers started promoting Persian as the main cultural language. And it's brought results. In the 10th century, a poet named Rudaki 
was working in the Samanid court in Bukhara. He was composing his poems in Dari, which he wrote in the Arabic script. Rudaki is considered to be the father of modern Persian language and the Adam of poets, as his work marked the beginning of classical Persian literature. Then the center of the emerging Persian literature switched to the Ghaznavid capital, Ghazna, with a great number of talented poets flocking there, most notably Ferdusi, who was the author of Shahnameh, an epic poem reciting the history of Persian kings. It is composed out of 50,000 two-line couplets and thus is one of the longest poems known to us. In these 50,000 couplets, the poet tries to use as least Arabic loanwords as possible by reviving or recreating native Persian words. So, starting from modern-day Tajikistan and Afghanistan in the 10th century and in Iran in the 11th century, Persian language was making a spectacular comeback as a language of court, culture and science. In the following centuries, the area was conquered by Seljuks and then by Mongols, but nevertheless, literature flourished as this period gave birth to the poets like Omar Khayyam, Saadi, Rumi and Hafez. The influence of Persian language spread far beyond its original borders. In the Mughal Empire in India, Persian language was established as the language of the elites. Same in Anatolia, where Persian was the court and cultural language of the Ottoman Empire, but quickly replaced by Turkish though. I mean, I can go forever explaining the history of Persian, but it's been already a long talk, so let us switch the subject a bit and finally talk about the language itself. Starting, as always, with pronunciation. Persian in Iran and Afghanistan is written with the Arabic script, while in Tajikistan they use Cyrillic script, a legacy of Soviet rule. In the Arabic-based alphabet, there are 32 letters which are written from right to left. Also, one letter might not look the same way depending on its place in a word, as some letters have different versions for the beginning, middle and end. You may have noticed as well that there are several letters that stand for the same sound, these letters represent different sounds in Arabic originated words, but in Persian these sounds don't exist, so they are pronounced the same as other sounds but written in their original Arabic way. At the same time, some letters have multiple possible pronunciations. Finally, you could see that there are three letters for vowels, but in reality there are six vowel sounds, which are divided in three short vowels, which are not written, and in three long vowels. So to know that this word is read as bastani, you should just know it. All these possible complications are virtually eliminated in the Tajik alphabet, as it is phonetic. There are 35 letters and the words are written from left to right, of course. But well, on the other hand, with the Arabic script, you could do this, which is crazy beautiful. So this is how they write Persian, but how do they speak it? Let's hear some native speakers. پدر ابن سینا عبدالله در دارایی کار میکرده و میگم مالیات جمع میکرده در شهری به اسم خرمسن که تغییر شکل کلمه پهلوی خورشید میهن بوده یکی از شهرهای مهم حکومت سامانیان در همین اطراف بنابراین این خون و زندگی ابن سینا شهرش و شلوغیش و تنوعی که داشت و در این حال همزمان هم دوره بود با نوابق دیگری در این دنیا زودتر این کرونا از جهان کلا بره و همه بتونن سالم و سر حال و خوشبخت زندگی کنن کنار هم خیلی هم دوستتون دارم این روزا که اینقدر تل خوبی رنگ و رو بی اتفاق داره میگذره به نظر من تنها کاری که از دست تک تکمون فعلا هر که اندازه خودش میتونه بر بیاد به نظر من دعای خیره تو نباشی چشم برات گریونه دنیا بدون تو برام زندونه دستا تگه دستام و تنها بذاره شب و روزم لحظی یاروم نداره تو که بارون تو چشامو میبینی لحظه لحظه ها رو کنارم میشینی تو که مثل گریه آرومم میکنی تو نباشی دل منو خون میکنی Persian speakers say that Farsi shirin ast Persian is sweet because of how lovely it sounds at least to them. What do you think? And while you're writing in the comment section, let's see if Persian grammar is as sweet. 
Persian grammar, contrary to its orthography, is pretty systematic. The sentence structure is SOV, there are no gender and no cases, and verb tenses are formed in a regular manner. You might only need to memorize the present tense stem, which is different from the infinitive. Adjectives always go after the noun, and they are connected to it by an ezafe, a sound e attached to the noun. You're not gonna see it in writing, but know that it is there. Doctore Ziba. The same logic goes for connecting two nouns to show possession. Le basse doctor. And for possessive pronouns, it's even easier. The respective suffix is added to the end of a noun, so her dress becomes le basse. Another postposition, ra, is used to indicate direct object. Man in parandero mibinam. I see this bird. But in spoken language, they say ro instead of ra, and even o, because why pronounce more sounds when you can pronounce less? This is an example of how language lives and changes even today. And we could see it even more with the vocabulary. First of all, how different are the three varieties of Persian? Farsi, Dari, and Tajik. Well, depends on who you ask, as this type of subject quickly becomes more political than linguistic. The main differences between the three varieties are pronunciation of some sounds, Cyrillic alphabet for the Tajik, and loanwords. Farsi would use more French loanwords, Dari more English, and Tajik more Russian. But the main source of loan words in Persian is of course Arabic. Arabic words count probably around 40% of Persian lexicon, but that's not sure though as it depends on who is speaking and in which context. There are also quite a few French loan words, especially in the Iranian standard of Persian, as in the 19th 20th centuries, France served as a model of secular culture for Iran. Thus, we see Persian words like merci, chauffage, bourse. However, the Academy of Persian Language and Literature is promoting the usage of native Persian terms instead of loan words like horudga or landing place instead of airport or danishga or knowledge place instead of university. And in Persian, it is quite easy to create new words as these can be built by combining different stems and affixes. And for creating verbs, it is even a simpler process. Take a noun, attach to it a simple verb like to do or to become, and you have a new verb, like kar, work, plus kardan, to do, becomes to work, or bidar, awake, plus shodan, to become, equals to awaken. Most of the verbs in Persian are formed this way, so you really just have to learn the conjugation of a number of simple verbs, and then you're able to conjugate anything out there. Finally, no matter the loanwords, Persian ultimately remains an Indo-European language, and its Indo-European connections are easily observed in its basic vocabulary. Persian influenced other languages too, particularly in those areas where Persian used to be a language of prestige. Both Urdu and Turkish are said to be made up of around 30% Persian loanwords. English adopted many Persian words too. Some of these are bronze, caravan, caviar, magic, paradise, and many, many more. And suddenly, Persian doesn't seem so distant and foreign anymore. Big thanks to my patrons for supporting this channel, especially for the top tier, who are voting on the next languages, and you could vote too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.